see me, you Stevie. Wondering how I reach more evolutions than Evie and make it look easy. What is up, Earth's Mighty and subscribers? It's Blur Without Fear. Welcome back to the channel. Okay, so today's video, I wanted to talk about what I feel is very easily my favorite Star Wars character. And that is the character of Dr. Afra, a character that was created by writer Kieran Gillen and artist Salvador LaRocca. She's probably, I would dare say, one of the most interesting characters you'll ever see in Star Wars canon. And I'll forgive you if you do not know or have any clue whatsoever who Dr. Afra is. She's a character who is really only associated with the comic book side of Star Wars. She's never appeared in a movie or TV show based in everyone's favorite galaxy far, far away. Her first appearance was actually in 2015's Darth Vader number three. She's what you'd call a rogue archeologist. She's heavily inspired by Indiana Jones. If you're familiar with the Indiana Jones franchise, you will find a lot about her character to be very similar, albeit her character has a lot of moral ambiguity surrounding her that we'll talk about in just a moment. But the thing I find really puzzling about Dr. Afra is that she is one of the few Asian characters of prominence in the entirety of Star Wars. There are characters like Sabine Wren, as well as the rest of the Wren family who are considered to be Asian in the Star Wars Rebels side of things. We also can't forget characters like Fennec Shand, who we have seen in The Mandalorian and The Book of Boba Fett, or Rose from the Star Wars sequel trilogy, or even Chirrut from Rogue One. And while each and every one of those characters is popular in their own right, Dr. Aphra might just dwarf all of them in terms of popularity. She is easily the most popular Star Wars character who doesn't feature in any of the movies or TV shows. Not only that, she's been the most heavily requested character to show up in any of the recent crop of Star Wars Disney Plus series to the point that when the Book of Boba Fett series was actively running, when the character Black Kersantan made his live action appearance on the show, a lot of people, myself included, were just itching to find out if Dr. Afra was somewhere waiting in the wings. Another interesting thing about her prominence as a character in Star Wars is that you don't really get a lot of focus on LGBTQIA characters in Star Wars, at least not on the movie side of things. However, there have always been little hints and nods in that direction, and it would make sense because technically in a galaxy far, far away, the same hangups about sexuality and gender don't really exist. Karen Gillan has stated on more than a few occasions that he always intended for the character to be lesbian, meaning that Dr. Aphra is the most openly LGBTQIA character in Star Wars canon who is considered a main character. The funny thing about Dr. Aphra, and I talked about this earlier with her moral ambiguity, is that she is, by all intents and purposes, probably the most toxic character in the history of Star Wars. This is something that is not even hyperbole by this point, because the trick with Dr. Afra is that she is an incredibly self-interested person. Now, a lot of this is due to her upbringing. She had a very complicated childhood where her father, Korn, was also an archaeologist, but very absorbed in his own work to the point that it made him an absolutely terrible dad. And her mother, Lona, who she gets her middle name from, she decided to take her away from all that, move her to the Outer Rim, and try and teach her how to only rely on herself. That was very informative upon how Kelly Afra became who she was. One of her most famous phrases that people tend to bring up is something that she learned from her mother, and it was a lesson that absolutely stuck and has informed her and in pretty much all her decisions ever since. The idea that good and evil aren't really true things, that they're very silly concepts, and breaking down evil as being nothing more than a measure of how much your choices take away other people's. Something that she has lived by pretty much the entirety of her character's run, to the point that pretty much anyone who she considers a close ally doesn't trust her, even those who actually think of her as a friend, even people she has been romantically involved with, a lot of them just accept the fact that Dr. Afra is a walking, talking Death Star who will destroy any and everything 
in her orbit. It's largely accepted that she is a garbage person. She is called a terrible person on a regular basis and she openly accepts it. She even refers to herself as a terrible person and often warns people not to trust her, which a lot of times ultimately ends with those very same people misplacing their trust in her and her proving them wrong. It's not that Dr. Afro is an evil character. No, she's not evil at all, but she does tend to just help whoever is going to further anything that's in her best interest. If her life is on the line, it doesn't matter whether it's the Rebel Alliance or the Empire who she throws her lot in with, she will do it. We have seen on multiple occasions where she has betrayed the Rebellion and betrayed the Empire based purely on which option was going to lead to her still being alive by the end of it. In her early days, she immediately worked for Darth Vader and was quite happy to do so, knowing that she was actively working against the best interests of the Rebel Alliance. She's not a person who believes in anything that either the Empire or the Rebel Alliance are actively doing. She feels that the Empire is just a means to an end, and she feels that while the Rebel Alliance is probably right to feel the way they feel about the Empire, that ultimately they'll just be another Quotey Fingers Empire if or should they win, that the systems that are in place are going to be the same. The only thing that's going to change are the people who are controlling them, and it's not going to make much of a difference to her because she stays on the outskirts of all of it. Now, one of the reasons she feels this way is because of a line that was told her the day that she watched her mother die at the hands of raiders, and that the Empire came to save her at the behest of her mother who called them in to rescue a young Kelly Afra from being killed by those same raiders, one of the first things that one of the Imperial officers said to her was that one has to let go of things that don't fit the big picture. That's how progress happens. This and one of her mother's idioms about evil, these are things that informed everything that Dr. Afra ever does. And a lot of times when she recites these same idioms, it always flashes back to why these moments were so dark and traumatizing for her. And these particular traumas are things that she recognized are exactly that, but she still acts on them anyway because she can't change. She is who she is, and people either have to accept her for who she is or don't. That said, Dr. Affer is probably one of the most accomplished, morally ambiguous characters in the Star Wars universe. She is a doctor strictly by virtue that she blackmailed her professor in fast-tracking her to her doctorate, despite the fact that Affer would have gotten there on her own anyway. Darth Vader also found her skill set incredibly useful, and she was instrumental in helping him plot against the Emperor before he finally betrayed him in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi. She's also discovered and handed over ancient Jedi technology, almost equal in lethality to a Death Star, to the Empire. She's also caused one of the Empire's most loyal officers, Magna Tolvan, to defect and join the Rebellion, despite the fact that Dr. Aphra was not on board for joining the Rebellion. She also unleashed two of the most homicidal droids in the galaxy, Triple Zero and BT. She tricked Vader into legit believing that she was dead once he no longer had any use for her. She single-handedly took down the Empire's Misinformation Bureau, and while she had help in a couple of these particular instances, she unleashed an ancient fungus that had imprinted on a Jedi and believed itself to in fact be that same Jedi. A set of events that is actually still affecting Star Wars in the comic continuity to this very day. She also shut down an Imperial prison colony and also swayed the hearts and minds of one of the Empire's most subservient planets into rebelling. Not only that, she was also instrumental in events that took place during the Empire Strikes Back. She intentionally threw Darth Vader in the Empire off the scent of the rebel base on Hoth, giving them just enough time to be able to make the escape that they made at the beginning of episode five, Empire Strikes Back. Now granted, yes, the movies did happen before these comics were ever created, but because these comics are canon, it puts greater context on the notion that if it were not for Dr. Aphra, Luke and Leia and Han and all the rest of the Rebel Alliance would have very likely been crushed by Darth Vader and the Empire in just the second movie. And one of the more interesting parts about how she helped save the Rebel Alliance from getting ambushed on Hoth during Empire Strikes Back is that all of this spawned from events where Dr. Aphra 
had tricked Darth Vader into a force trap that made it possible for her to take him down. And I mean take him down in ways that Darth Vader is rarely ever taken down. Like there are very few instances I can think of where Darth Vader has been humbled to the degree that Dr. Aphra has done to him. And she does it all quite casually. Now to be fair, she doesn't use any lightsabers or blasters. She's really just using her own ingenuity and her engineering background. Once again, Dr. Aphra is easily one of my favorite characters. I love her to death, despite the fact that you're not even really supposed to. The best thing about her is that she makes terrible decisions. I would dare say epically terrible decisions. And yet she just goes with these decisions. She knows that they're bad. She knows every time that she makes a piss poor choice that she is doing something terrible and a lot of the time she just goes with it because she accepts who she is she lives her truth 24 7 365 if that's even a thing in a, a standard cycle of star wars but she does it just the same she's unapologetically who she is and while i would never be friends with a person like her in real life, the idea of following this character in a Star Wars setting is incredibly entertaining. She is a character who is just as quick to work with Luke Skywalker as she is to work with Darth Vader, and that is something I feel is a level of moral ambiguity that I find incredibly nuanced. And any character who can make you think to yourself, hmm, maybe she has a point. No matter how terrible the decision is, I think that's a character worth learning more about. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, do the YouTube thing, like, share, comment, subscribe, and let me know what you think about the character of Dr. Afra. Have you always known about her? Or are you today years old finding out about her? Keep it plus ultra and sound off in the comments.